it took maybe 10 15 minutes to actually like generate a data set label it and then train our neural network and this is the results that we get even if we're moving around here in the image frame it is still detecting it pretty good dry, drawing a really nice bounding box around it hey guys and welcome to a new video in this neural networks and deep learning tutorial in this video here i'm going to show you how we can deploy a custom yolov 5 model with OpenSV. so in one of the previous videos we actually like build our own data set uh, with a mock detector so we took a couple of images of a mock then we did uh, a data annotation so we actually like, labeled our images and we also did some data augmentation in roboflow so make sure to check that video out first of all because in this video here we're just going to deploy that model that we actually like, created so i'll link to, to the video up here you can check it out we're building neural network or we're using yolo v5 from scratch building our own data set training the yolo model on that data set and we also show some of the results and predictions that we get but in this video here we're actually like, going to deploy it with OpenCV as we have done in the previous video but first of all we're going to join discord server i'll link to the description here you come join the channel channel is about computer vision deep learning ai and so on you can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small amount of fee everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel also if you're a member of the channel here i can help you out with your projects and give you some guidance if you have some if you have some problems in your own projects and applications if you're a member of the channel so thank you guys so let's just jump straight into the code here i'm just going to go fast over the code here because in the previous video i'll link to it up here you can just check it out on my channel we're just doing optic detection so basically here we're just implementing a class where we can actually like get a video frame or like we can get the video free for from a webcam or some other camera that you're connected to your computer in the last video we just did it with a, a computer vision or like with a url from youtube and then we're just passing that youtube video through our model and then deploying a, a pre-trained yolm v5 model um, in that way in this video here i'm just going to convert it so instead of taking the images from or like a video from youtube we're just actually we're just we're just importing or like we're just opening a video capture with OpenCV and then we're going to read in the images from our video capture or a webcam and then use them as numpy arrays and then we just pass in our numpy arrays through our yolo 5 model and then we get the results out and pre-process or like post-process them as we did in the last video so here we just have our class again we're just going to go shortly over it if you want to know more details about every line of code here make sure to check that other video out how to act like deploy a yolo v5 model here in python with omcv so first of all here we're just importing torch in the other video i'll also show you how we can import or install torch and also for gpu support because when you're deploying neural networks you often want to deploy them on on gpus so they're not taking up like all your processing power on your cpu but here we're just creating our mock detector class first we have our initialization function so when we are actually like initializing an object of our mock mock detector class we're just going to specify the capture index so which index of our webcam do you actually like want to get the images from then we also need to specify the model name here so this will be the model uh, or like the weights file that we actually like download from either like google colab after we've trained our model so this will just be the the, the path here to our model weights that we load in and then we want to use that to actually like post process or like process our images that we get in from our webcam so here we're just going to set up these different kind of things so our self video capture index model the different classes that we have so all the classes that we actually like want to do optic detection on it could be yeah, that you've trained your model on, on doing kind of cat and dog predictions then you also need to specify the classes here so we, the, the classes here will really like like um get in the different kind of labels that you want then we also set the device here so we're just using CUDA if it's available or else we'll just see, use the CPU again I refer to the other video if you want to know how to use the CPU or like the GPU for doing neural network inference here with OpenCV and uh, YOLO V5 so here we're just going to get the video capture we're going to load the model so in this video here we're going to create this custom model in the last video we just used the other model here so it's a pre-trained YOLO V5 and the small model that we used and then this video here if we're specifying a model name we will act like load in a custom yolo 5 model that we're trained on our own and then we need to specify the path to the weight file that i just talked about we can also set this fourth reload here to true if you get some warnings down um, in the output or in the terminal when you're running your program so this will basically just be our model our custom model that we pre-trained in the other video or like trained in the other video to do mock detection and i'm going to, to show you the results here at the end in this video then we're going to set up the score frame here so we're basically just going to to pass through uh, like the frame through our model then when we pass the frame through our model down here we just get out the results then we're just going to take the labels from our results and also the coordinates for the bounding boxes 
opt optics that we act like detecting in the image frame. We're just returning that so we can actually like use that later on. We have a, a class to label here. So we're basically just converting from our classes to our label. Then we have a function to plot the boxes. So the boundary boxes around it. Basically here, we're just getting the result and the fl frame that we want to uh, draw the boundary box on. We just unpack our labels and the coordinates for boundary box. And then we basically just have a for loop running through that. We have a threshold value here. So if our detection is not uh, like more certain than some threshold, then we will not say that this is actually like a mock that we're detecting in the image. So if you get too many false positives and or like you don't get any detections at all in your image, make sure to tune this parameter here. It could be like a 50% confidence score level that you want it to be above or something like that. It depends on how good your model is and, and actually like how many objects do we want to detect in the image frame and also the certainty in those objects. Then basically here, we're just drawing our rectangle here around the objects that we're detecting. So this would here, we're just going to go with point three as the confidence score. We're returning the frame that we actually want to, det to detect or like this, uh, like display the boundary box around that object that we're detecting in. And then we have our call function here. So when we initialize our object later on, it will just call this call function here automatically. It will get executed and it will just run the program here in our one loop. So we're opening up our video capture, which is the webcam of a computer. Then we just have a while loop here that is true while we're not like it, it is just running in this while loop here as long as we're not pressing or like hitting escape on our keyboard. First of all, we're resizing our image so it will actually be the same image dimensions as we trained the neural network on. Then we're starting a timer so we can get the number of frames per second. We actually like just um, take the scores here. So we just put in a frame into the score frame. So we get out the results and then we're actually like just plotting the results that we get. And then we get out this new frame that we're just going to in show later on down here at the bottom. We're ending the timer. We're calculating the number of frames per second that we get. And then we're displaying that on the image frame as well. Down here, if we're hitting escape at any time, we'll just terminate the program and it release our video capture or like the, the webcam that we actually like opening up uh, to, to, to get our images from um, our webcam feed. Down here at the bottom, after we created a class, this is the last lines of code. So here we basically just, we're going to create a new object and then we're going to execute our code because we have this automatically call, call function here inside of our um, mock detection class. First of all, we're setting the capture index here. My webcam is ca a capture index zero. You could have maybe one or two, depending on if you have several cameras to your computer. And then we're going to specify the path here to our model name. If you get some errors when you're running your own code and make sure to, to go down to the description here, I'll have the code on my GitHub. You can just copy paste it, train your own models or use like some custom YOLO models that you can find on the internet. Play around with yourself, your own cameras and so on. You can just copy paste the code, run the Python file here and you'll be able to actually like run it. I'll also upload this, um, uh, these weight files here uh, as well if you have a mock that you want to do detection on or follow the other video that I have where you can actually create your own optic detective from scratch and then you can deploy it here. So we have like a fully project of generating data set, training a neural network and then deploying that neural network even on the GPU. So here we're just going to create our detector and then we're going to run our detector down here. So right now we're just going to run the program here. We're going to test out a couple of different marks and see how the detection acts like works when we're deploying our YOLO model here on the GPU. Here we see using device CUDA, we can even see the, 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 the CUDA NVIDIA driver I have over here or my um, graphic card from my GPU. So we have the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 six gigabyte of, um, of memory here. So we're using CUDA, we're running this neural network here in OpenCV with Python and we're running it on the GPU. So here we see we get the number of frames per second. We have me in the image frame. I'll just take this mock up here that we act like did our optic detection on. So this is the mock that we trained our neural network on. Uh, we created our a data set with um, around, I think it was 70 or 80 images that we used. And then we also used some data augmentation. So we ended up with around 200 images. It took maybe 10, 15 minutes to actually like generate our data set, label it, and then train our neural network. And this is the results that we get. Even if we're moving around here in the image frame, it is still detecting it pretty good, drawing a really nice bounding box around it. Even if we're rotating it around, it can still detect this mock. Even though we haven't trained it on that many uh, images, it's still really robust. We can pl play around with it. We can like move it around here in the image frame. We can see that if it can't see like half of the mock here, it is not able to, to detect it. And that is because it hasn't been trained on those situations. 
But if I can see the whole mark and we're moving around in the image frame, it is actually like pretty good at tracking it. I actually have another cup here so we can see that it is actually like able to detect multiple marks in the image frame, even though, even if we're just moving around here. So we're able to detect as many marks that is actually like in the image frame. And we can even try here with some other different kind of mocks. So this is an example of a mock that we haven't trained on before. So we can see sometimes it actually sees it as a mock. Maybe this hang here that you can hold the cup in is the reason that it can actually like be detected sometimes. But if we're moving it around, we can see that it is not really detecting this cup. It doesn't see it as a cup. Maybe it's too high. Maybe the color, maybe it uses the color to actually like get some features of the mock, but it's not able to detect it. Maybe sometimes when we have this hang, it detects it in the image frame. But again, we haven't trained a neural network on this type of cup. We have only uh, trained it on this cup. And when we get an internet frame, it just detects it immediately, even if we're rotating around here, orientating it, rotating it, translating it around here in the image frame, it is still able to detect it. The last cup here I have that I want to show you is another one here. It's a bit smaller. It, it looks kind of a bit more like the other one, but it's still, it's a white cup. And the other one was a yellow cup, but it is really, it is, it is detecting it really nice. It hasn't trained on this cup at all. It hasn't seen it uh, ever before. So it's acting like a pretty nice detection. We can see if we move it up here, we lose some detections. Maybe most of our images were actually like in the middle of the image. Maybe learn some features there. We can rotate around, see how it performs. We can see it's still pretty good. Now we can even get some detections here at the boundaries of the image frame. It tracks us around pretty good, even if we're rotating it. And maybe if maybe if you just see it from the front, we had some orange as well. Rotate around, we get some more orange. So this is actually a pretty nice mock detector, even though we have only trained it on a couple of images and with us with a really special cup, like a mock, which is this one. Get around 50 frames per second. It doesn't influence our CPU at all because we're running the whole network neural network here on the GPU. If you have a better GPU, you'll just have more FPS, you can do more processing, you can take more things in your neural network. You can even have larger neural network running. So this is just a model with around like I think it's uh, 7 million parameters that we have in this neural network. Yeah, we can see it down here at the bottom. We have 213 layers in our neural network here that we're running on the GPU. So this is actually like a really nice project. We completed it from the scratch where we had to like have our data set, train our YOLA model, and now we're deploying it on the GPU with OpenSV and, and Python. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently just doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about big image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision to get depth information in our image. And now we're actually like creating point clouds from that depth estimation uh, with stereo vision. And then we're doing point cloud processing techniques, how we can actually get post estimation of point clouds, optics in the scene and so on. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else on the scene next video guys. Bye for now.